All right. So here we go. Work energy theorem. A lot of this one is going to be adding to that free body diagram by manipulating equations. Kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial is your change in kinetic energy. And what we know is the change in kinetic energy is equal to your change in work. So we're going to be able to do a lot of substitutions in there to help us out. So here's our change in kinetic energy. One half times the mass times the velocity final squared minus one half times mass times velocity initial squared is your change in kinetic energy. I think that one is on your formula sheet. If not, add it. Make sure you're keeping a nice list with everything organized on these because that module four test is going to be like a midterm where you're going to be using equations from every unit. It's really kind of like a build out there. Now, since we know that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the change in work, we can set up the problem this way. So if they ask for the change in work, you could use this equation. If they ask for the change in the kinetic energy, you could use that equation. So sometimes it makes it simpler for being able to solve one thing or another. Now here is a simplified part where I just made this kinetic energy final equals kinetic energy initial plus the change in kinetic energy. It's just that first equation rotated around that you'll find that that one tends to be quite handy, especially since if you're not solving for kinetic energy and you're solving for another term like velocity, acceleration, or distance, your masses drop out. If that's going to confuse you or you're going to forget about mass in other equations, do not use that bottom one. Because if they ask for the change in kinetic energy and you don't have the masses there, your problem will be wrong. So just go really slowly when you are selecting your equations. All right, an accident scene on a level road, um, skid mark to be 100 meters. That's our distance in the X. Notice a level road, no circles, no hills. So that's going to be really helpful for our solving. Coefficient of friction is 0.18. What was the maximum speed? So before you do the free body diagram, picture that. We have somebody that is going to be skidding to a stop. So my velocity final is going to be zero meters per second. My maximum speed is what happens right before they started um, skidding. So I'm going to be solving for velocity initial. Keep that frame of reference. I'm going to do that free body diagram. What can I get rid of on this free body diagram? I'm not going to have a force applied. I'm not adding any pressure. What do I know about the distance in the Y? Your force of normal is going to equal your force of gravity. And in the x direction, I'm only going to have one force, the friction force. And you're like, wait, where did you get that equation? Because I skipped the step. Force of friction equals mu times the force of normal. I know force of normal is mg, so I just did that substitution directly. Feel free, if you're comfortable with that, to do that. If not, then go back, use the equation sheet every time to start to make sure you don't make any silly mistakes on it. Right? So you can do that either way. We know the force of friction is the only force. So when I sum the forces in the x direction, it's going to equal to the force of friction, which is equal to mu mg, which is equal to mass times acceleration. So that might be any number of those components that I can use depending on which quiz question that you get. Okay. Solving for velocity initial. So honestly, I'm going to use all my module one equations. I'm not going to use my kinetic energy equation um, because it's the one that I'm comfortable with using it the whole time, right? Velocity final is zero. Velocity initial is what I'm solving for. Um, and distance is 100. So what else do I need? I still need my acceleration. For why didn't I go right skip over this guy? Because I would need acceleration and time. Nobody's got time for that. I need acceleration, but I know from summing that forces in the x direction, can I find acceleration? Yep, acceleration is equal to mu times g. I could also use, if they gave me the force of friction, force of friction equals mass times acceleration. So I could have divided both sides by m and had 
acceleration equals the force of friction over m, just in these cases without the force apply and where you have no acceleration in a y. So in these specific cases, there's a couple different ways to get your acceleration. So now I have my acceleration, whatever it was from those other problems, and I can solve for my velocity initial. So I use this formula to do that. However, since this is module four, what else could I do? I could also use kinetic energy. Here's my kinetic energy formula. Do I have my mass? Yep. My velocity final? Zero. Yep. My mass? Yep. Velocity initial? What I'm solving for? My mass? Yep. My acceleration? I still would need an acceleration and I have my distance. So I would still have to plug in my acceleration into that equation. So those of you who are good at math have just noticed that this equation here is actually pretty much identical to the module one equation. It's just having everything multiplied by two and canceled the masses. Okay, so you can use either equation, whichever equation you want, you are still going to get the same answer. Same answer because it's basically the same equation. Find your acceleration, substitute into the problem, solve for VI. What do we got here? 50 kilogram object, that's our mass. Horizontal surface is 30.9. This is not our force in normal. Let's read back. The kinetic friction force between the object and the horizontal surface. So it's just written really, really weird. But that's just the force of friction. It's just a moving friction because they are sliding at the time. Okay. The initial speed, velocity initial. Okay. And friction is the only force. That, that's a really nice one. It means it's going to be very similar to the last one. No force applied. So that's going to be helpful. Uh, what distance will it slide before it comes into a stop? So in this time, we're going to be solving for the distance to see um, what the ramp is as opposed to starting for the speed. What does it say? I only have velocity initial. Let me go back and read. Coming to a stop, velocity final equals zero. So again, module one, module one, have that help you out for faster. Set up your free body diagram. Force of gravity equals force of normal, no force applied. Force of friction, in this case, the force of friction is 30.2. So mu times m times g equals 30.2 which also equals mass times acceleration. Lots of little things there, depending on what the particular problem wants you to solve for. Okay, we're solving for D here. So I, again, am gonna look at this equation that I had before. Um, I'm using this one because I just find it simpler with the less of the fractions to type in the calculator. Velocity final, that's a zero. Velocity initial, 12.2, don't forget to square it to a change in distance. So change in distance is what my solving for. Guess what? I'm going to need that A again. Hey, okay. they gave me the friction force. Friction force is equal to mass times acceleration. So there's two ways you can do it. 30.2 equals mass times the acceleration. Or if you want to do it more so that it relates to the last problem we did, Force of friction equals mu mg, 30.2 equals mu times 50 times either 10 or 9.8, solve for you, mu, and then you could do the exact same setup that you did before um, for finding your acceleration. That's only if the algebra struggles and you want to be able to keep the repetition the same. Honestly, I would not do this. I would just solve for A here and then substitute it in. So force of friction over mass equals my A to substitute in and then solve in this case for my distance. And there's the answer up there for you to check your work. Either way, you're going to get that same answer. Okay. 
what would be the other way to do it if you did not use um, that equation? You could also have said that the force in the x, 30.2, is equal to the change in kinetic energy over the distance, or let's rewrite that. Distance is equal to the change in kinetic energy over the force in the x. So that would be the true way of doing it for this module, but like we've already talked about, it kind of all relates to the same method. If you are doing this, make sure you have your masses in there or else you're not going to get the right answer. So you would plug in this for the change in kinetic energy and then divide it by the 30.2. Same answer. Same answer. All right, on this one, so many units to convert just to make sure you have errors. And that's because we're getting used to actual true life problems, which will have a lot of different numbers in there. So to go from grams to kilograms, divide by a thousand. That little tick mark for 2.5, that means feet. So make sure you are converting from feet to meters before you go on. We have an angle, we are on a hill here, okay? And we are given again the friction force. So that's nice. So we're not having to deal with mu and find the speed at the bottom of the ramp, velocity final. Let me look. Oh, yep, they gave it to us. Velocity initial equals zero. So a little bit less work when um, you don't have two speeds that you're dealing with. Drawing the free body diagram, force of gravity straight down, force of normal is your surface force perpendicular to the surface. Force of friction opposite the motion and even tells you in the problem impedes the motion. And then make sure you're breaking out your force of gravity into its component forces so you can sum your forces in the X and in the Y. So what are we looking for? Velocity final. What do we know? We sum the forces in the Y direction. We know that the force of gravity cosine theta is equal to the force of um, normal because the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be a zero. So those two arrows are equal. What do we know about the x direction? Fg sine theta minus the force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration equals the force in the x, the sum of the forces in the x. Some of you are only been writing this for the last module. Now make sure you're writing that next part because often we're not always going to need the acceleration. Sometimes we're going to need to know the forces in the x direction. All right, so what do we get from there? Can we substitute anything out? We can. Instead of force of friction, we have a actual number, 0.005. Do we have a force of gravity? That's mass times gravity times sine theta. We have a mass, we have a gravity, we have a sine theta. Good, we have a mass. So what can we do? We can solve for A using that equation right there. Once we have A, yep, put it in that kinetic energy or in the other equation from before. We want velocity final, velocity initial zero, a, we're getting from the problem. And do we have a distance? In this case, it's going from the top of the slide to the bottom. So they gave us that 2.5 feet. Just change it into meters and then solve for your velocity final squared. So I would, again, be using that module one equation to solve for it. And so we didn't need the coefficient of friction in this case because they gave us the force of friction. And that is all.